Hello, and welcome to chapter two. In today's chapter, we're going to talk about the business vision and mission statements. So in this chapter, we have a few learning goals here to discuss. We're going to look at the value statements. We're going to talk about the role of the vision statement, the characteristics of the vision statement, the nature and role of the mission statement, characteristics of an effective mission statement, we're going to identify components in the mission statement, discuss the benefits of a firm having a clear vision and mission statement, and evaluate and write mission statements for different organizations. Okay, so remember that this is the comprehensive flow of the textbook that we talked about in chapter one. So here we are in chapter two. We're going to talk about the vision and mission statement, which is going to be part of the whole process. So these two mission statements are really going to drive the rest of the process. So it's an important step in any company. Okay. So the core value statement. So for, for a company, this is going to, you know, really spell out uh, what the firm holds dearest to it, what is really the heart of the firm. So it's going to hopefully convey their integrity, their ethics, their fairness, their um, things that they want to make front and center of what they are as a company, whether it's equal opportunity employment, teamwork, accountability, continuous improvement, innovation, um, any attributes the company has that's really going to um, make it stand out. You know, uh, for example, if we looked at LinkedIn, LinkedIn's core values, they talk about customers first, relationships matter, open and honest communication, requiring, requiring excellence. Um, so these are just, before you make your mission statement or your vision statement, you really should write down as a company, the executives of the company and all the employees of the company should get together and decide what is really our core values? What is our, our, the rock of this company, the foundation of this company um, that is going to help us to write our mission and vision statements? So a vision statement should answer this basic question. What do we want to become? So a, a vision statement, you know, what do we want to become? It's a big question, right? So what we're trying to do here is, you know, everybody in the firm, starting with, you know, managers and executives, to agree on a basic vision of where the company wants to be or what they want to achieve in the long term. So it needs to answer the question, if we're in business and we're, we're moving forward in business, where do we hope to be in the future? What do we want to become? So we want a clear vision of that's going to incorporate some of our, you know, what we said here, our core vision components, but really be simple where it, the vision statement is more like a sentence. And it's really just one clear, ultra refined sentence that's going to give the foundation of um, what the company is trying to become and also be um, the beginning of the mission statement. So it should really be limited to one sentence as best as possible. Um, here are some uh, vision statements from some companies, IBM to be the world's most successful information technology company focused on helping customers apply technology to solve their problems now in the future. If you look at Starbucks, to be the premier purveyor of the finest coffee in the world while maintaining uncompromised principles as we steadily grow. Uh, if you look at Kellogg's, to enrich and delight the world through foods and brands that matter today and tomorrow. So these are a couple of very well-written, very clear mission statements. So with the vision statement, I'm sorry, it's very clear and very direct vision statements. So the, what I meant to say is the vision statement is going to be what we use to springboard us into the mission statement. So now keep in mind with the vision statement, this should be short. Like I was saying before, like I had just gave you a couple examples, um, hopefully one sentence. And we want to really boil down and, and refine, you know, what we're trying to do 
as a company and put it into the statement. So it should, it should have something to do or connected or reveal the type of business the firm engages in. So, you know, Starbucks talks about coffee, Kellogg's talks about uh, food, um, IBM is talking about tech, information technology. <clears throat> so we want to somehow um, get that in there. And if you look at Charles Schwab, their um, mission statement is simply to help investors help themselves. Very direct, very simple. Um, Instagram, to capture and share the world's moments. Uh, so you can see that, you know, for some companies, it's only a few words that encapsulate what the company is trying to do, what they engage in and what's important to them. So once the vision statement is, is written, it becomes a little bit easier to um, work on the mission statement. So here's another one, Dr. Pepper Snapple. To be the best beverage business globally, our brands are synonymous with refreshment, fun, and flavor today and tomorrow. So that's another, um, you see a common theme of these vision statements, trying to look forward. And Starbucks, we already, I already talked about Starbucks. Okay, now on to the mission statement. Mission statement's more comprehensive. More is gonna be detailed here. Um, so part of the mission statement is, why does this company exist? What is this company trying to do? Trying to not just become, but what are they today and where are they gonna go forward? Why, why are they here? Um, and this evolves into what is our business? You know, cause some businesses are very complex, might have multiple brands across multiple product lines, across multiple types of products. Um, and some businesses might be simpler where they just sell one thing. Um, but either way, it all should be detailed and spelled out into, you know, a clearly defined overview of what the business does to help employees, suppliers, customers have a better understanding of who the company is and what exactly do they do. Um, in the mission statement, uh, objectives need to be defined and strategies need to be fine, defined. So the mission statement is going to oftentimes um, list, list objectives the company is trying to make both short term and mostly long term, and also formulate and discuss the strategies that the company is going to pursue. Um, so the mission statement is going to reveal who the company is today, who do they want to serve? What they want to become? And in a, in, a, in, a, in a clear and concise way, not as concise as the vision statement. Um, so think of it as what we call a statement of um, description or purpose or philosophy, um, a system of beliefs that is going to be, you know, wrapped around the basic business principles. Um, that the company is going to follow to really give a good example of, you know, how this company intends to operate. So some characteristics of a mission statement, you know, mission statements can vary a great deal between companies <clears throat> and companies will often update their mission statement, you know, because companies do change in their scope in their focus and their products. But it's going to allow this mission statement should allow for the generation and consideration of a, of a range of feasible alternative objectives and strategies without locking management in the box or, or stifling management's creativity. So you want to make it the mission statement should be somewhat basically what we're saying here should be somewhat flexible. So the management has more room to maneuver the company. Uh, and the mission statement really doesn't lock them down to any particular um, one way of doing things or one way of uh, running the company or one way of selling its products. So this tends to lead to mission statements being a little bit more broad in um, their descriptions. Uh, now, the mission statement, remember, has to appeal to a wide range of 
<clears throat> people, not just employees, not just owners, not just shareholders, not just stakeholders. It's it could be the community in general. It could be the community that the company is based in, the community the company sells to. It's going to be a pretty broad amount. Um, so other characteristics of a mission statement that I want to talk about. We'll get to that here. Let's. I just want to just back up a minute and talk a little bit more about stakeholders. So we know what customers are. We know what uh, investors are and employees are. They're part of a group that is, um, if you is, the stakeholders. And it's basically a broad term for people who are involved with the company one way or another. So they may not work for the company. <coughs> so certainly, <coughs> excuse me, employees work for the company, but they're stakeholders, managers, stockholders, board of directors, customers, suppliers, distributors, creditors, governments, unions, competitors, environmental groups, general public. So pretty much everybody is a stakeholder in most firms. Um, so if you're connected as a person to a firm in any way, you're a stakeholder. So now the firm where they've learned the hard way not to focus only on the owners or stockholders, they need to focus on everyone's need and really provide a responsible um, set of directions that's going to be something that's beneficial uh, to everyone as much as possible. So here's some characteristics of a mission statement. The So one thing is, it's going to be, like I was saying before, more of a bigger scope. And, and typically does not include monetary goals or numbers or sales figures or anything like that. It's more of an open-ended um, description of where, where the company is, where they want to be, what the company does, how they relate to stakeholders. And it should be somewhere around, they say here fewer than 150 words. So I'm thinking, uh, it should be more concise, maybe even a hundred words in length. It should be motivational, inspiring. Um, it should be something that when you read it, if uh, the ultimate mission statement is you read it and maybe you get tingles, like you're just, you know, so um, invested in the company that you just get so uplifted by what their message is. And that's a rare, that's going to be rare for uh, most people, but the more connected you are with the company, the more inspirational you might find their mission statement. Um, identifies the utility of the firm's products. So utility is, think of it as usefulness. How, um, how are these products changing the world? How are these products helping um, consumers? Uh, so that needs to be mentioned. The, it could talk somewhat about its commitment to social responsibility, meaning how is this company going to how is this company going to help the um, the social environment that it exists in whether it's their communities that they they're in the communities that they employ um, so they really need to know how how are they going to be giving back to society um, and then within that is their environmental responsibility so how are they going to take the environment seriously uh, in, in specifically regards to pollution, recycling, energy consumption? A lot of this um, is important to stakeholders today. OK, um, seven in, in, includes nine components. So when we're talking about um, customers, products, services, markets, technology, concern for growth, maybe profitability, philosophy, self-concept, concern for public image, concern for employees. So these are nine components that any good mission statement should touch upon in one way or another. Um, so it should be reconciliatory, which means it needs to resolve um, different views among its stakeholders as best it can. And it should be enduring. Um, so it's not, we don't want to cast this mission statement in stone, 
but it should be an enduring in a way that this mission statement can be can last for many years. And hopefully, in addition, it's going to connect with customers and it's going to connect in a way that it's going to in, in, encourage customers to use the product, buy more of the product. Um, so if it's inspi in, inspirational and it connects to the customer's core values, the company's core values connect to a customer's core values, whether it's, you know, integrity of the product, value of the product, utility of the product, uh, commitment to social responsibility, commitment to the environment, somehow there's a connection made between the company and the customer, and then that's a successful mission statement. So now remember, the mission statement isn't, we don't want it to be so, uh, con so concrete, as they say here, that it's going to lock the management into something. So you don't want to express anything that's very um, too measurable or uh, too something that's not scalable. So you want to provide, you know, a basic level of direction, a sense of direction for the company, a sense of the company's motivation. You know, hopefully you can further a, a corporate image. You can um, express a philosophy of how the, the enterprise uh, is going to be moving forward or, or the philosophy that made the enterprise successful. Um, and the it should also the mission statement should also line up with the vision statement. So there should be uh, some connective tissue between the two so that they're clearly um, connected. In some companies, you know, it's clear that one committee wrote the vision statement while another committee wrote the mission statement, and they're almost almost contradicting each other. So something that has to be thought about when the company is putting together their mission statement. Um, so things to consider when putting this mission statement. Um, so these are things that, you know, you don't want to offer things. Um, so you don't want to just say, we provide clothes to consumers. You want to say something more like, we, are pro we, we provide an attractive, smart look to our, dis our distinguished customers. Um, you don't sell shoes. So you don't write mission statement, our company sells shoes. You write, we sell comfort. We sell, we sell the ability for your feet to um, go further in comfort and, and enjoy the pleasures of walking, you know, something that almost tells a, a story that a customer would want to hear. Um, we're not offering a house, we're not offering insurance, we're offering security, we're offering reliability, comfort, uh, we're offering uh, a safe and friendly place. You're not selling books, you're selling hours of entertainment um, benefits of knowledge and discovery. Um, so there's, there's, there's another one down here. Let's, oops. Okay. You're not offering me music. You're offering me the sounds of, uh, excitement, entertainment, inspiration. Uh, you're not selling tools. You're giving me the benefit of being able to fix my own house, fix my own car, make beautiful things. You don't, you don't put in your mission statement, we sell furniture. You put in, we sell comfort, we sell coziness. Um, so you get the idea that you want to really paint a picture for your products and not be so unrefined. Um, so you want to, you don't want to, so like we said before, you don't want to offer things to people. You want to offer concepts, ideas. Uh, emotional connections, feelings, benefits, which is basically a, a form of utility. So the mission statement shouldn't be so raw and so um, direct to say we sell this or we provide that. No, you want to paint more of a um, a picture of what the company is going to, how people can benefit specifically from this company, because any company can sell shoes. But some companies can sell the best shoes, the most comfortable and best shoes in the world. You know, um, other components in the mission statement are you should think about, of course, are who are the customers? 
who are you selling to? Who is your target market? That can sometimes be included in the mission statement. You know, and it could be as simple as, you know, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts can say our target market is coffee lovers or coffee drinkers. Um, products or services. So you can talk about your broad-based family of products or services. Like Kellogg's talked about their breakfast foods or just their foods, providing pleasurable foods in general. Um, so it get, it's a little borderline with don't sell me things, but you still should mention uh, as you're building the uh, environment that your products invoke, you know, you do need to get the basic idea of what your product is. Um, you can also talk about where your products are sold. Some companies are global. Some companies provide products just in North America. So that also helps, you know, investors and, and, and customers understand where your products are available. Uh, technology. How is technology related to your firm? Are you cutting edge technology? Do you produce, innovate? cutting edge technology, or to use the cutting edge, top tech, cutting edge technology to make the best products possible. Uh, there should also be a strong commitment to the strength of the firm, the how strong the firm is and how it's, it's like a, um, a young lion or tiger ready to grow and survive and, and, you know, move forth in the world. Um, so that somehow the company needs to convey, especially to you know, employees and shareholders, want a company that's strong and is financially sound to work at, and that's going to be there for the long term. Even customers want to be associated with strong companies that are going to provide products for a long period of time. No one wants to be associated with a failing company or a bankrupt company, or you know, this is they want to. You need to project an image of strength and durability. Uh, also philosophy, what are the basic, you know, this is tied to the vision statement as well. And it should be re should be connected to the vision statement when you're discussing the basic values of the company. Um, then you, the mission statement can go more into the company's beliefs, their ethical uh, priorities, their aspirations, their motivation. So more of, you know, what is the company's overall concept of who they are, their philosophy of how they connect to the world. Um, somewhere in the uh, mission statement, the competitive advantage should be talked about. Why, how is this company distinctly different from its competitors? What does it do? What does this company do that's, that's a, a much stronger competitive advantage over other companies? Uh, public image. So, in the mission statement, the dedication to uh, the public should be written, how responsive they are to um, social needs, the community, environmental concerns. So for some companies, um, they realize the way to connect to consumers is to say that, listen, we're not just taking your money and running, we're taking your money and reinvesting in the communities we serve. We're looking for innovative ways to consume energy more responsibly, things like this that, that make uh, customers or employees proud to be associated with the company. And also there should be a nod to employees as, you know, as employees are really, most firms will say they're their they're biggest and most valuable asset. So there needs to be uh, a connection to the employees, you know, re reiterating that, you know, we would be nothing without our employees or somehow setting the value of the employees up. Now, what is the, why should companies have a vision and mission statement? Now, you don't have one or the other, you always have both. And the reason that companies, why it's so important to have these statements is to make sure all employees and managers understand the purpose for the companies being in business. So like, why are they in business? Employees need to know what are we trying to do? So they have that in their mind as they're doing their jobs. Uh, provide a basis for prioritizing key internal and external factors. Um, so util this helps utilize their strategies. So what we're talking about here is, so this is just acknowledgement of um, 
And when we go over the uh, pr uh, future chapters, we're going to be talking about possible uh, internal and external considerations and employees and, and management need to think about. So the mission statement is to somehow touch upon these internal external factors or forces that are going to make these strategies possible. Um, some mission statements, not all, should really provide a basis of allocation of resources, a, a listing of the resources that the company has and how, how it would be allocated among um, the, the various um, departments of the company, the various needs of uh, customers, stakeholders. So really just sort of recounting the not really the assets, but when we say resources, it comes in many forms. It could be um, financial resources. Uh, it could be people resources, employee resources. It could be um, just natural centers of um, strength the company has that uh, they can call upon in a more broader sense. Provide a basis for organizing work, departments, activities, and segments around a common purpose. So basically what we're saying here, the mission statement can kind of set up how the company is going to be organized and the activities the companies will be involved in. Um, so this could be for companies that have the more conglomerates, that have much more um, complex business, things of that nature. Okay, so... Um, 10 benefits of having a clear mission statement and vision. So let's uh, look at this a little bit more closely. Get that all 10 in here. Okay, number one, achieve clarity of purpose among managers and employees, which we kind of talked about already, but it just makes sense. We want to know the mission, the mission statement should make it after a person reads it, whether the manager or employee should have a clear understanding of what this company is trying to do. Provide a basis for all other strategic planning activities, including internal and external assessment, which we're talking about in chapters three and four, establishing objectives, defining strategies, choosing alternative objectives, devising policies, establishing organizational structure, allocating resources, evaluating performance. And that number two benefit is a lot of that's in all the future chapters we're going to talk about in this textbook. So we'll, I'll elaborate on this much more as we reach those chapters. Provide direction. Where is the company headed? Do they want to expand globally? Do they want to move into all, all segments of food processing? You should really make it clear where the company is going. Provide a focal point for stakeholders in the firm. So what is really, and this could tie back to the vision statement, what is the focal point that the company wants their stakeholders to focus on? You know, that we're the best in the business or we provide the ultimate customer satisfaction. I mean, really, you want to drive that point home. And that's really hopefully tied to your competitive advantage of what you do best. Um, resolve divergent views among managers. So hopefully this puts all the managers on the same page or the, the mission statement and the vision statement can really be something that we could tie the expectations and tie the, the motivational direction of the managers to a similar uh, cohesive uh, viewpoint. Uh, promote a sense of shared expectations among managers and employees. So this is really important that when we talk about expectations, we want to manage uh, uh, the expectations of employees and managers about what the firm can do and what they can't do and what they're trying to do. So this gives, you know, gives a realistic approach to what the company um, wants to become and how they want to get there. Uh, project a sense of worth and intent to all stakeholders. So really, again, just expressing the values in a way that's going to be relatable to all stakeholders that we talked about before. Um, project an organized, motivated um, organization that's worthy of support, commitment, um, worthy of your money to buy their products. Um, achieve a higher organizational performance. So somehow this mission statement we want to you know project our our best future self what we want to grow into so hopefully this shows us our higher self as a company 
achieve synergy among managers and employees. So basically, the mission statement should bring managers and employees together better, to work together better, uh, cooperate better, not be at each other, odds against each other. Um, okay, so de again, developing the mission and vision statement. Uh, here, we're going to talk about some widely used, used approaches in doing development of this. How do companies actually sit down and get this done? Well, there's been a lot of research in this area, a lot of people looking at and asking about companies and how did they do it? How did you do it? And they look at the most successful vision statements and miss mission statements and, and sort of work backwards and get an idea uh, about these statements and, you know, ask managers um, to read these as, as background information before they start working on their vision or mission statements. So management um, or anybody who could just not only be management, they could be employees involved too. So they have a better idea of, of what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and in part of this, they should also read a lot of other companies, mission statements and vision statements to get some inspiration from what some great companies have already done. Um, and you can ask managers themselves to prepare a vision and mission statement for the organization. So one way is that if you have a committee of 10 people working on this, each of them can come up with their own draft and you sort of merge these together. So you want to facilitate a committee of, of course, the top executives and managers of the company and merge those statements into a single document and basically discuss, refine, discuss. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be modifications, additions, deletions. Um, so the meeting, and I was involved definitely in, in several meetings about vision statements and mission statements, and it's long and tedious. And I think we met about 30 times over six months to really get to a point where everybody was happy and everybody could sign off on it. So it's really a daunting uh, task to uh, put this together. It's just so many people have to come together and agree and you wanna, you know, it's proofread and you might have 20 different drafts and before you finally can settle on it and say, okay, this is what we're happy with. If we look at Hershey, here's some examples of some mission statements. If we look at Hershey's, we bring sweet moments of um, Hershey happiness to the world every day. So here's the author comment. The statement um, lacks six components. Customers, technology, growth, survival, distinctive competence, public image, employees, you know, and it's, so in these 12 words, they do hit on, um, three of the you know nine areas that a mission statement should should incorporate and the mission statement here should be a hundred to 150 words here it's only 12 words so that's a poor example um, if we look at the proposed mission statement for Hershey which is going to be basically a um, revised now in the revised mission statement it's much longer it's 73 words uh, we aim to serve consumers of all ages and lifestyles by providing high quality chocolate, candy and snack products. Globally, we intend to grow and expand our product offerings using robotics and business analytics. Um, we're, we are dedicated to supporting all communities we operate, where we operate, especially to the boys and girls of Mil Milton Hershey School, which is uh, a school that they run that is like sort of a um, something that's beneficial to society. Uh, through our friendly and well-trained employees, we provide customers the best chocolate anywhere and wrapped in Hershey happiness. So now this is a much more detailed mission statement. You can see how it's much better than the original one. It just says so much more and really in, um, tells the world everything they need to know about Hershey. So let's look at uh, Rite Aid. This is a drugstore. Um, so our mission is to offer the best possible drugstore experience for people of all ages. So here it's not saying we're selling you things. We're not offering a store to sell you things. We're offering a possible, the best possible drugstore experience. So it's an experience, not a thing. Uh, around the United States, we have state-of-the-art information systems that provide our pharmacists with warnings of any possible drug interactions to help ensure better customer safety. We are determined to improve our customer overall health through our wellness programs. We offer an extensive line of other beauty, food, drink, cosmetic, and vitamin products through our alliance with GNC. We believe in treating our customers like family 
and strive to maintain our reputation as the most personable drugstore. So this is 88 words in a very well-written uh, mission statement. If we look at UPS, and this is how, you know, the reason I'm taking the time to talk about these different companies is that these are excellent examples of mission statements and something that if you ever have your own company, if you're ever asked to participate in drafting a mission statement, these statements will help lead, lead the way of an a good example. So UPS, we strive to be the most timely and dependable parcel and freight forwarding delivery service. Again, very clear statement of what they do uh, in the world. So the geography, uh, their global reach, and so as they just say in the world, by implementing the latest tracking technology. So that's how they talk about their technology. We are also, we, we are able to profitably grow offering individual and businesses dependable, accurate delivery times. We promote from within to improve morale among all employees. Our philosophy is to, res is to responsibly balance the needs of our customers, employees, shareholders, uh, and communities in an exemplary, exemplary manner. So again, they're hitting all the main points here, just about all the main points. Um, okay, so let's look, let's look at this graphic here, how to gain society, sustain a competitive advantage. So the start of having, let's make this a little bit bigger. The start of having a competitive advantage is, you know, really having a clear focus of what the company need is and what they want to become. The mission statement, the vision statement really help with that. So in this circular ongoing process, establishing a clear vision and mission statement is going to help um, management to define and formulate strategies of how to collect data, collect and analyze data and the, matri the metrics it should use to establish a clear strategic plan, which with the strategic plan, now we can implement those strategies. We can get to work in establishing those resources and structure and motivation and reward programs, attracting customers, managing the finances. Then we can evaluate and monitor how are we doing? Is it working? Are we getting there? Are our implemented strategies producing results? Uh, if there is, you know, there will be changes in the business, there will be significant changes in stakeholders, business products. So periodically, the vision statement will have to be reestablished um, and rewritten, and it starts the process all over again. And this is following this process is how ultimately companies will nurture, gain and sustain different competitive advantages. And there's going to be chapters ahead, where we're going to talk about uh, more more directly about what a competitive advantage is, how is it sustained, how do companies cultivate it. And we're also going to be co covering cases of multiple different companies where the focus is their competitive advantage. Okay, that's it for chapter two. I hope you found this uh, helpful. Uh, stay tuned. Next chapter we're going to be talking about is the external assessment. Thank you and take care.